Welcome back to the Kaobunga Collection. So we have one, one more game before we're done with this. So once again, let's check the box. Also, my condolences to all the people in Japan where this game is getting delisted. Wait, the Kaobunga Collection is getting delisted in Japan? Exclusively Japan. I'm guessing it didn't do well over there. Um, it's weird because it's gonna be fine literally everywhere else. So it's weird because again, this these all these are Japanese made games. Some people are thinking there might be some rights issue going on over Maybe. there. I don't know. It's possible. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. Obviously, ninety percent of the people buying this are Western, so it's not like Konami cares. So. Anyway, well, that's the thing, though. Like Dad's mentioned, it's getting delisted oh, oh. only in. Oh, oh. and for, for your sale and use only in Mexico and the United States. So don't try to. Uh, sorry, sorry. USA and Canada. Sorry, USA and Canada. So don't try to sell this anywhere else. And yes, the 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 turtle on the cover of the NES version is Leo. Sorry, Dad. So Leo got relegated to the lesser version of the of this game. And Mikey got. Oh, oh look, guys! It has the official Nintendo seal of quality. Clearly, this means that this game is the bee's niece. Okay, okay. Despite the infamy of that seal, I do want to give Nintendo some credit that they did help separate some of the wheat from the chaff, at least. Oh, yeah. Sure, they let a lot of stuff slide, but they did help things get better. The turtles hit the, street. the turtles hit the streets and pound more than pavement. Only a hardened new breed of Ninja Turtle could bring fight to the finish. Street Fighter 2 Combat to 8-bit. <laughs> Get sure, it, guys? Sure, you like Street right. Fighter 2, so here's Street Fighter 2, but with turtles! Strider's brutal challenge will finally prove who's the most dangerous ninja warrior of them all. A grudge as old as rice. As old as rice? Has exploded into a supreme tournament of torture between the most highly trained mar masters of martial arts in the world. If you think you've dealt with intense moves before, this will kick you right in the cowabunga. Oh my god, you suck. So Don't get me wrong. Yes, all of these 90s isms in these in this marketing are usually very corny but they usually have there's an art to this corniness this is Adrian. just this feels like it was written by someone who's parroting that 90s cheese Adrian, you gotta realize in the 90s they like to make innuendos but also in the 90s the soccer moms were a lot more scrutinizing so while they were putting those as innuendos they had to be more Shall we say covert? Ergo, more corny to hide those in new endings. I can tell that even as a little kid watching the '80s cartoon back when it was first uh, airing, even I would would brown my would brown my eyes at that sentence. Like, I'm gonna kick you in the cowabungas. Nobody says that. <laughs> like, even uh, yeah. Yeah, like, admittedly, even back in the 90s, nobody said that. It's just that, I guess, that was their way of getting crap past the radar. For one or two street-hardened warriors. Okay, so the basic gist of it is that the Shredder challenged the Turtles to a tournament. I do find it weird that they legit name drop Street Fighter 2 to the point where they even had to add the trademark yeah. applied to it. I, like, I, 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 I'm one. Did, did Capcom notice this? Because they could legit... Um, uh, get them in court for mentioning that, can't they? Well, I guess having the trademark next to it does help, but my question is why? Like, not for nothing, but Street Fighter 2 was like yeah. the, the juggernaut of for the rec games back in the day. Yeah, it was. For the record, everybody, Street Fighter 2 didn't have an NES version, meaning you're kind of shooting your NES fighter in the foot by... Uh, Ask uh, drawing comparisons to Street Fucking Fighter 2. I <laughs> guess that was the way of saying, hey guys, Street Fighter 2 ain't on the NES. You want some action just as good as this that? Time, well, come it's on here to the NES. Sure, being a teenager is fun, but when you're also a ninja master and a mutated turtle, you're going to face some real challenges. Shredder has issued a challenge that can't be ignored. So if you want to see what kind of guts it takes to be a champion, then pop this in Nintendo Entertainment System game pack into place. Turn on the juice and get ready to sweat like a turtle. Do, do turtles even sweat? I don't think. I, I, I don't. I don't. Think I, I don't, they I don't, maybe I don't. Do. One more thing: if you want a fighting chance in this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Tournament Fighters game, you better read this instruction manual. Okay. Um, you know. Also, also, that's a lie. I can ignore it. I can just not buy the game. Who's the baddest? On a smoldering summer afternoon. Well, this technically you already did. You. Well, uh, you got the Calmon collection, didn't you? Also, to oh, answer yeah. your question, <laughs> reptiles generally do not have sweat glands. But oh, hey, they're mutants. 
But hey, like, they're mutant turtles, so I guess, thanks to their mutated DNA, they can sweat now. I Science. guess. Sure. Um, I mean, it would make sense if they, if, if we had a continuity where their, where their, their anthropomorphization comes from human DNA, rather, but, uh, it's supposed to be, uh, well, in the 80s, okay, in the 80s, uh, cartoon, they actually kind of did that. Because in the 80s cartoon... If I recall correctly, one of the versions goes that the thing you last interacted with will be yes. what you sort of turn yes. into. Yes, that's what the 80s cartoon, in cartoon does. Case, they yes. interacted with Splinter, you know, when back when he was human, they became more humanized. Yes. And then Splinter, I guess, interacted with a rat, before yeah. he became a rat. That, yes, that's what the 80s cartoon does. Uh, so if you're using the 80s cartoon continuity for this, then yeah, I guess that the, this does make sense. I, so I guess that's where the sweat glands come from. Sure, I guess that's plausible enough. Uh, Again, like, let's be obvious, they were just putting that to sound cool, probably, first and foremost, but mm -hmm. technically, it could work yeah. if we assume that they're mutated enough to... And this was, them. and around this, at, at, at this point, the the, the, end, the first NES game didn't do that. The, the, the first NES game, according to what I've heard, apparently takes more from the comics, from the Mirage comics, rather than the 80s cartoon. But by this point, the Konami games were definitely taking from the 80s cartoon. So yeah, this does fit. They're even having the characters in this manual talk like they do in the 80s cartoon no mike that basically was... the... no go go no, no go on go on basically it seems to be the turtles basically chilling out right before they get the message of course basically yeah basically an explosion comes and blah, blah, blah. he reaches out to the others in his three fingers a, go a golf ball sized castle with a piece of paper inside leonardo takes it after careful examination he twists it open and pulls out the paper to look over his shoulders at the message i offer you turtles a challenge let us meet in the streets of manhattan and see which of us is the most powerful of course you really don't stand a chance shredder hey let's have a tournament to see who fights shredder good idea leo says donatello <laughs> Let's, Let's go. go, dudes! <laughs> hand to hand! No weapons! We'll show Shredder who's toughest! Um, Turtles fight with honor! Because this is totally not a trap or anything. Also legit, no weapons. But my dudes, the weapons are what help differentiate you guys when we can't tell your colors apart. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. On a black and white Game Boy, how are you going to tell who's who? Not fortunate. Yes, this is this a... Go on. Unless this is a clever way for the NES to only have one turtle playable, but you can pretend it's any turtle. Oh, I love this one. Changing a name. To begin, insert your game pack into your NES. Turn the power on and watch the action begin. It also helps to plug the console to the to the power socket. And have the TV <laughs> turned on. <laughs> I don't need it. Anyway, the options screen before you begin to play, you may wish to adjust some of the game's options. Press the control pad up or down or until option is highlighted and press the start button. Okay. Story mode. One person. Playing a tutorial, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, this is not that much of interesting. How to play. The object of the tournament is to use your skills to defeat an opponent in two or three rounds of match. You can kick, punch, flip, or block your nemesis to your heart's content. You can also pick up the fireball. You, you can pick up the fireball? What are we oh, playing, Mario? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, wait, that's supposed to be the fireball? That that thing right there? Um, that doesn't look like a fireball. <laughs> I can clearly tell we're in for some Street Fighter 2 tier action with this game. Leonardo, he's the leader of the group and a loyal practitioner of the art of ninjutsu. He is a perfectionist, but only possesses average power. Remember the, the whole thing where Raphael is the powerhouse uh, of, the, of the four. They so. really ditched their weapons for this fighting game. Well, oh my god. Remember, Leonardo is kind of like Mario in Mario 2. He's the all, he's the all around guy. Right, well, he's got a fierce attitude and the power to back it up, of course. His throw technique isn't even a throw, he hops on his opponent's back and bites them! Jesus! Holy cow, Raph! <laughs> Jesus and Christ! Again, I, get, I, get, I, I get that you have anger issues, Raph, but jeez! Mike, well, they did their weapons, so gotta fight whichever way they can. Mike is a free-spirited, fun-loving dude. He's got a lot of athletic talent, too. His leaps are high, but his defensive abilities are weak. Okay, makes sense, I guess. Hey, who are you calling weak, man? <laughs> his throw technique is a somersault throw. His special move is the kangaroo kick. As for Donatello, he's smart and loves to tinker with mechanical things, but doesn't spend as much time in the gym as the others. His attack is a little... Yeah, it makes sense. He's the nerd of the group, so that makes sense. Yeah. Where are his glasses? I'm supposed to know he's the nerd. <laughs> I just... <laughs> 
Oh, hey, Casey. Casey, he's a loner with a strong sense of justice. Versatile attack abilities, but vulnerable. I can tell that that's uh, Mirage Casey rather than uh, yeah. 80s Casey. Because 80s, K- 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 80s Casey is more buff than that, and he definitely looks more sillier. <laughs> Go on. You said Mayhem did that thing as well with the glasses. Weird. Hothead, a former fireman who unwittingly unleashed an ancient samurai dragon spirit. His massive power and resistance to damage make. Uh, is this from the Mirage comics, Dutch? A fireman who unwittingly no unleashed idea. unleashed an ancient samurai dragon spirit. I mean, okay, right. that, that someone I'm reading here. Yeah, it does sound like something you'd see in the Mirage comics. To be fair, anyway, Shredder oh. is out to defeat the turtles in any way he can. He is a powerful ninja master with a variety of attacks, quick speed, and awesome power. Okay, hothead. He has shown up in TMNT Fast Forward and Tales of the TMNT. But, uh, yeah, it turns out this video game was his debut, as it turns out. Oh, really? Out. So they made... Well, actually, oh, he's based wait. off of action figure. Ah, okay. Well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. The action figure, though, came out in 1992. Oh, the video true. game he first showed up in was released in 1987. Right. He's yeah. actually shown up in a few video games, apparently. Okay, after every couple of rounds, blah, 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 blah. Consum- consumer support, if you, feel, if you feel stuck in the game, if you feel stuck in the game, uh, you can call this number to charge up your parents' phone bill up the ass. So go ahead, kids, phone away. <laughs> yeah, so especially I guess, if that phone number doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so I guess credit where it's due, you know, hothead. That's a, I guess that's a creative backstory instead of, you know, being mutated. It was legit magic that made him the way he is. He just happened to also be a fireman. So, as usual, with these digital clips, I'm going to remove the, the slowdown and the sprite flickering from the original hardware. Because, you know, uh, to optimize the experience, since, um, since these uh, those limitations, th- those were parts of the game's limitations, and not a natural artistic decision. So, I'm going to, so this will render the game more close to what the developers in- envisioned. Konami. Okay. Story. Manhattan. Present day. Oh, it starts just like the... Um, it looks the, like it says Manhattan. Ma- I was about to say that H looks like a K. The turtles receive a strange letter. A? That's the letter. From Uncle? I offer it. From Uncle Phil? I offer you turtles a challenge. Let us meet in the streets of Manhattan. You know, it was such a missed opportunity, we never got Will Smith guest starring. And see which of us is the most powerful. Yeah, the fact that they never got Will Smith as a casting gag uh, as one of the Turtles, uh, it feels like such a no-brainer. Of course, you really don't stand a chance, Shredder. Love, Shredder. P.S. Make sure to bring pizza this time for after. Oh my god, Ref, what happened? Why are you blue? <laughs> da ba dee ba do da Uh... Okay. Yeah, seriously, Raph is... Oh, God, Donatello, you're looking a bit yellowish there. And Casey's okay. And there's Hothead. Who should be red, but is actually green. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I understand... Yeah, I, no, 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 supposed no, to be red going off of how he looks on the cover there. Don't get me wrong. I understand that the NES wasn't exactly the most powerful platform, but don't tell me you can't color Raph green. I mean, come on. He, he's, he, he's technically a shade of green, but it's a very bluish green. No, I'm like sorry. That, said, lo- like... that looked like a light blue to me. It seems like Shredder has finally given up on kidnapping people and has simply changed the turtles to a street fight in the middle of Manhattan. Here are the tips you need to get an advantage in this NES tournament. And yes, it was unreleased, unreleased in Japan. So, legit, he's just... Challenging them. Fight me in the street, y'all. Le, le, Fight me, le, IRL, turtles. Le, well, yeah. Turtle tip number one. Clash of the hotheads. While the game doesn't usually let you play a hothead versus hothead match, there is a way to do it. Start a versus CPU match, choose any character other than hothead for yourself, and then set hothead as a CPU opponent. Play the match and select rematch after it's over. Now choose hothead for yourself. The CPU cursor will still be on hothead. Select him and get ready for the ultimate showdown. Or you can do what uh, in the Ultimate Combat Collection, you can uh, have a little cheat to make it so that you can select it, so you don't have to go through this loophole. I wonder loophole. why specifically they didn't want Hothead versus Hothead. I guess, I guess they they thought of this as a secret code, even though it really isn't. <laughs> Like, oh no, this one specific character you normally can't do a clone fight against. 
Okay, don't Total 2. Run like shell. Walking. Double tap forward with any character to dash. The turtles can do flying kicks and elbows if you attack while dashing. Again, oh. they really just ditch their weapons. I don't think Shredder even asked them to ditch the weapons. Don't fumble the fireball. While the manual says to press B to pick up the fireball, you actually should press down and B. Hope that makes things as clear. So fuck the manual, I guess. Like seriously, like. God damn. Fa <laughs> I mean, thank. Okay, thank. Thanks, Digital Eclipse, for for that tip. Uh, Jesus Did Christ. Did something get lost in translation on that manual? I guess. All right, now it's time for uh, Leo to have something to say. So, Dej, go ahead. While my brothers were partying, I studied the blade. I also studied the slide kick, which is why I'm the only turtle in the this game who can perform this ancient move by pressing down an A. Thanks, Leo. That ancient move being a slide kick. Yes. I've learned that in a white belt course of karate. <laughs> well, Jova, everything starts with the basics. Yes. There you go. All right, that's basic. I, mean, I stopped doing karate when I reached about brown belt, so yeah, I know a few things. Okay. All right. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, seriously. Uh, uh, yeah, about that blade, Leonardo. Again, I ask, why did you ditch it? Like, I'm sorry. I know I'm <laughs> harping on this, but it feels weird to do a fighting game where the turtles don't have their iconic weapons. In the air, hit down and beat to do a big body splash with Hothead. Everybody out of the pool. Basically, a really strong move with Hothead. Basically. All right. And now before we and now we have an eclipse tip. Want to enable our head versus hothead matches and other cool stuff without having to use the trick above? Just hit up the common collections enhancements menu. Yeah, basically. But you for mentioned your... how to do it in the top left part. No, the manual. Well, uh, the idea for this section, Jova, is to explain the actual proper methods of the original hardware. But the game also, but the common collection also gives you a way to do it easier without having to jump through hoops, basically. So, but but they still wanted yeah. to give you the the accurate. NES experience by giving you the OG version of doing it, so in, in case you want to be a purist and do it the old-fashioned way, and all that shit. I tell ya. As cool as the old days could have been, some stuff just plain did not make sense now that we, well, admittedly, now that we know the full arc behind it. Admittedly, you know, back you see, then a lot of look at that. was- Raph literally looks blue! I'm, that's not a shade of green, that's straight up blue. Oh. Yeah, no, he he's he he is blue. Um, there. actually, yeah, it's yeah, uh, <laughs> and actually, it's turquoise. Get it? Because he's a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I mean, I mean, look at Leo. I mean, Leo looks green. Uh, Mike looks green. Why can't Ralph look green? And yes, there you go. That's his. Well, that, that, Jesus, he really does bite. Oh my God, he's Mike Tyson. Yes. Okay, you know, so yeah, the NES version I, of Tournament I, Fighters, I, as you can see, is a very rudimentary, basic as shit fighter because, as Deji said in our previous parts, it's practically impossible to make a, a proper Street Fighter 2 style fighter on the NES. The, the hardware just doesn't allow for it. Go on. Guys, the box said this is going to be Street Fighter 2 tier action on the NES. Because, as we all know, uh, marketing departments never lie. <laughs> like. I can only imagine people who. Oh my God! This is literally we are Street Fighter Two at home. When you think about it. Yeah. Which you know, it really is hard to imagine, but it really was like that, where the SNES was essentially the equivalent of everybody else having like a PS3, while you're stuck with the PS2. Admittedly, the PS2 fared a lot better versus the PS3, but you get the point, though, in feeling left out on the newer console generation, so I can understand people lapping up the chance of, again, getting a way to play Street Fighter 2 on the NES. This... I know we've just started, but I'm gonna say this ain't it, Chief. The, the moves are very basic. Don't get me wrong, there are special moves uh, you can perform. What? Uh, what? Uh, what was that? That was yeah, Raph, that, but... That looks a bit... That was Raph biting uh, the, his opponent lips. That's one of his moves. Don't you see? You're biting your own brother? What the hell's wrong with you? They have a very special and loving relationship as... Uh, guys, shouldn't we be trying to stop the Shredder? Well, no, we, no, we have to fight each other first for, to see I'm who can go. I'm challenging you for the leadership for like the 60th time. 
Yeah, uh, I really do like to play Leonardo versus Raph every now and then. I get it, red versus blue and all that. It's not even just that. Like from a character writing standpoint, uh, it, it makes sense. Like that, 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 you see it in the first live action movie. You see it in the 2003 show. Uh, because from a writing standpoint, it makes perfect sense because their personalities uh, would naturally make them clash because they're different. Anyway, so basically, I showed you how the how the game works. And uh, for the sake of uh, getting through this, because to be honest, this fighting game is not particularly fun to play, as you guys noticed. Uh, we're going to we're going fast forward the game. Let's fast forward the game because I haven't actually showed this feature before in the in this. Play for in the collection runs, so I might as well take advantage of this to showcase. Basically, at any point in Digital Calypso's collections, this also works in their other collections. Uh, I don't think, I don't think the first Mega Man X, uh, the, the first Mega Man Legacy collection has this. I don't think so. They, uh, they haven't actually implemented this feature into the collections yet. Just, not. Um, but most of Digital Calypso's collections have an ability for you to just watch a playthrough of the game. The cool thing about this is that this is not a video clip you're watching. This is a script uh, that's being applied to the actual ROM and at any point in the game you can press square to take over and start playing from any at any point in the game. In fact, uh, if you want to get the Platinum Trophy for this game, here's the easiest and quickest way to go about it. Uh, Click watch game for every single one of these games because all of the trophies involve just completing the games. There's no other challenges for the trophy. It's just a, it's just complete all the, the 14 games, right? So what you do is um, start a watch game session, and then as the as the as the player is about to, as the the script is about to kill the final boss, take over and then deliver that final hit yourself, and it counts as a trophy win. So you can easily get this game's platinum under an hour, basically, <laughs> if you if you if you if you if you exploit this. Leo versus Hothead. Well, you already faced Raphael. Well, this is not Raphael, though. This is Hothead. No, it's a Hothead. You know, Raphael's the one. He already faced him. <laughs> Curious. Does each character get, like, a um, slight customization to all the characters that they fight, or... I assume Leonardo will have to fight his other brothers along this way too at some point. Yes, yes. Uh, the, you fight all of the opponents in the game. Like when you get to whoever it is, it's always a mirror match, obviously. Like uh, with a if different color. I recall color. correctly, in other fighting games, they had enough characters so that you chose one turtle and then you had a fair amount of other enemies to fight against and maybe a clone of yourself. Yes. Uh, uh, well, remember, in the Super Nintendo version, when it's time for the mirror match, they just uh, pull out the same excuse as, um, as the Genesis version, where it's a purple clone version of that turtle that you're playing as. Um, you know, the thing is... I'm sorry. No, no, go on. The thing is... Oh, slight spoilers there. That Shredder will be the ending. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. the Shredder that invited us to this tournament in the story is the final boss? No kidding. That What a spoiler. <laughs> You know, the thing is, ironically, in a you lot may of have it's beaten actually... me in the past, but now it is you who shall taste defeat. Oh, just bend over and let your daughter step in again. And yeah, as you can see, this is a Mirage Shredder because he's he's uh, wearing red instead of purple. Um, but yeah, no, um, the thing is, we joke, but actually, with most of these games, it's actually Shredder's daughter, Karai, who ends up being the yeah. final boss in these. My guess is Heck, the people who know, made this specific version didn't get that memo. Also, if I recall correctly, there were other fighting games even on the, um... Oh, wait, no, that was the Genesis. Was this the only TMNT fighting game for the NES? Yes. The, th the thing is, Jova... While fighting games were around before Street Fighter 2, uh, they were mostly just in arcades. And they were mostly an arcade oh, thing, yeah. like because whenever you tried to port um, uh, a fighter to the NES, it just was. It's kind of like the same thing with the arcade port. Sorry, the the NES port of the arcade of the original arcade game, where it's well, such a problem. where it's such a watered down version compared to the original arcade version. Well, you know. Well, part of the problem is that the NES had a much more limited controller for starters. Yeah, uh, so yeah, how do you do a compelling fighting game where you only have two face buttons? Yeah, it's kind of difficult to do that. <laughs> combine, so, combine with the fact that you can't even do all that cool spectacle you see in the arcade. Yeah, 
Fighting games in this platform are not really doable. Not really. So that makes me wonder, how did this game fare overall? It probably didn't do that well because, uh, I mean, let's face it, like most people, when they think tournament fighters, TMNT, they only think of the uh, Genesis and the CNES version. This version very, very rarely gets brought up uh, for good reason because most people didn't bother with it. Uh, by the time this game came out, uh, most people had already moved on to the Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo. Or, you know, the SNES version of this game. Well, that's what I said, Super Nintendo. Um, okay, uh, let's see. So we beat the Shredder, yeah, let's see. Yes Go ahead, Deji. Oh, okay. Shredder, Shred this better not be a cheat. one of your lousy tricks. Wait for it. You have not seen the last of me, Tartals. Oh, it really wasn't a trick. And he just runs away. <laughs> 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 also, Splint- Only on our Fortnite dances. Also, Splint- It appears as a floating TV. Oh. Because, uh, sure. Splinter? You have performed well, my sons. Now let us celebrate our victory. Also, Splinter looks Splinter? terrible in that portrait. Jesus Christ. Uh, like... Father, he, he did just run away. There you go. Um, Donatello's pose there is, um... <laughs> Is he jumping? Like he's about to, ju is is he he's about to leap them? onto the turtle. So the now go challenge the hard mode challenge next time. The card mode. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of look like a K. Konami, 1993, all rights reserved. 1993. Uh, like, see, by this point, most people had moved on to the next generation. So yeah, this probably didn't yeah, sell that well. They were still making games on NES. Yeah, they... I think Mega Man 6 was this year or a year earlier. Mm -hmm. So, what is behind the hard mode of this version? I I looked it up. Uh, it's the same basic ending, but it doesn't say anything. Uh, it doesn't say the challenge, the hard mode. Of it. I'm not kidding. You'd think this would be the, something like the other games where you get different endings depending on the difficulty. But I checked. Trust me. Uh, you don't get uh, the, the ending is the exact same. The only difference is that that message with the hard mode doesn't show up. That's it. So I didn't bother with it. <laughs> really? Yes. That's, um... I get the feeling this this NES version was probably rushed in a lot of ways because yeah, it, it doesn't really like even on a content basis, it doesn't really have much of um much to t much to say really. Like it's just a a drunk report. Like obviously, it's good that Digital Eclipse included this for the sake of completionism for the, including all of the OG Konami era of TMNT games. So I'm still grateful that it was included. But yeah, it's more of a curiosity nowadays than anything, honestly. Don't don't play this, just play the NE, the Super Nintendo and Genesis versions, they're much better. Um, don't only play this like once for your curiosity's sake, but that's it. I'm probably never gonna play this game ever again. Um, so yeah, Dej, uh, Dej, your thoughts on this particular game and the Kalbano collection as a whole? Wow, this game looks like a complete waste of time, but good for preservation. As for the Cowbungo collection as a whole, now having now owned it physically, I can safely say that this is a really cool collection. It, and you can tell that the guys who made this were a big fan of the source material, and it's really cool that Konami was still able to preserve or stuff like the instruction manuals and the mag and the promotional material. Mm-hmm. All right. So. Great job. Dubs. Um, well, as for this game, um, eh, this looks pretty boring. Yeah. To be honest, not much more I can say. But the collection itself is really good. Yeah, a lot of uh, extras, a lot of um, a lot of interesting little tidbits you can get. Um, I would rank this only slightly below the Atari uh, collection that they did after this. Because that had full documentaries as well as all this stuff, but this is still a pretty good collection nonetheless. All right, Jova. Can I even call this We Have Street Fighter Two at home? <laughs> like, I mean, no. This is you. You. We have Street Fighter Two from the bootleg store. Yeah. Yes, we have Street Fighter. We have bootleg Street Fighter Two at home. Like, gameplay wise, this doesn't even seem good enough to. P on par with a Street Fighter 2 bootleg. I mean, I don't want to call it actively bad. The game is working with what it can on the NES, but 
Again, on the box, they sure set themselves up for comparison by claiming, Oh yeah, we're the Street Fighter 2 of NES games, baby! You don't need Street Fighter 2! You don't have to buy an SNES, Genesis, or... Um... Jaguar? 3DO? God, yeah. Even the, like, even the Jaguar. Oh, okay, 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 okay. To, to the 3DO's credit, it did have what was at the time the definitive home port of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. So there is that. Which, because yes, Capcom do love, love making new versions of Street Fighter 2, arguably even still to this day, but yeah, holy cow. Remember, Java, this was back in the day where they had the excuse that you can't add fighters via DLC, so that was the perfect excuse to release the same game over and over. <laughs> it really was diabolical genius, but to their credit, I kind of get it. Street Fighter 2 was like the goat of fighting games back in the day, which is why I can sort of get why they would advertise this being the Street Fighter 2 of it, because, you know, people hear Street Fighter 2, of course they're going to go gaga for it. That being said, I still feel like they could have done better with this game, at least content-wise. Like, the fighting moves are one thing, but the campaign... Um, incredibly short, and I get it, maybe it has a difficulty mode but to hide behind, but it doesn't even have Karai on the highest difficulty, like, it's legit, no tricks from Shredder, he just invited them to fight, and that's it, no one kidnapped, no tricks, he just runs off like a pansy. Kind of makes you almost wonder if this was a waste of everyone's time. Like, what was he going to do if they didn't show up to fight? I'll Cry and run off? I'll give the original NES himself. game... I'll give the original NES game credit for as terrible as that game was, I at least got to see the Shredder explode. Like... <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't have it in his budget to explode this time, I guess. I guess. <laughs> but, yeah, the Cowabunga Collection as a whole, though... This is a stellar collection. They retrieve the materials from old and new and very much clean them up to make them nice to look at and easy on the eyes to read overall. And it's a very comprehensive collection too. Dude, like, you know, it's almost a shame we couldn't include the newest game in there, but, you know... I kind of get that this was probably wanting to stick strictly to the classics. That and the um, Shredder's Revenge doesn't technically belong here because it's not made by Konami. Uh, it's made by a different company, so it's not really. It doesn't really belong ah, here. Ah, that's right. Konami were the ones who released this collection. Yeah, Sh anyway. yeah. Shredder's Revenge was not. Uh, Shredder's Revenge is indeed a throwback to the old Konami era. Yes, but it's made by a different company, and technically, this is just something different. Uh, but uh, the actual collection of the old Konami material, rather than of. So, Shredder's Revenge is a throwback to the Konami material, but it's not technically not part of the Konami material. God, imagine someday a collection that takes in games from all the same franchise, but made from different companies. Granted, that would require companies to get along. One collective umbrella. Yeah, that would. Yeah, that would require companies to get well together. Yeah. Shame, because this would have been a nice way to include the Platinum game too and resurrect that from the dead. <laughs> the pla much like the Transformers, that uh, much like the Transformers one and the Korra one, those pla that era of Platinum games is probably not go not gonna ever come back. <laughs> Lost to time, but not to emulation. You don't even need emulation, Joe. But all those games have PC versions. You can just play the the PC versions on your PC. Well, yeah, but, you know, what goes on the internet stays on the internet. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. like, you know... Sure, sure, stuff. sure. Regardless, though, Kalabunga Collection, great. If you don't have it and you're a big Turtles fan, get it. Definitely. It is legit the definitive way to play these games. Like Deji said, the NES version of Tournament Fighters is a waste of time. It's super basic. Again, how do you make a, a strong competitive fighting game with only two face buttons? It It doesn't really work like that. The... I'm legit wondering if there was any renowned fighting game on the NES. <sighs> oh, who knows? May maybe if you maybe if I search high and low, I could find one that's decent. But in general, it's just not a good idea to try this. It's just, the, the hardware just is not good enough for it. 
Um, they would have to get pretty damn creative if they've managed to make a game like this work at, uh, great on the NES. I seriously doubt. But, but again, if you know anybody, anything, or like, say in the comments, maybe. The point is, the game is not great. The campaign is super short. The story, the, the storyline is a thin excuse for the gameplay, and there's not really that much character. I gotta give the other games, Determined Fighters games on the Super Nintendo and the Genesis, actually had storylines cutscenes and, and you know that gate that help give the the campaign their own unique personalities this on the other hand this is just the bare minimum uh like there's not even an attempt to try to inject some kind of character into this campaign um so yeah very forgettable the fighting like i said is very simplistic you have two bot to attack buttons so of course it would be uh there's technically special moves but trust me, you're not missing much. You're just missing slight kicks, like Jova said. And uh, okay, the, the moves are not even particularly flashy. They're very basic in their execution because, again, the hardware doesn't allow us to be super flashy with our moves. So yeah, it's a very super basic bare bones fighter that was clearly made for the sake of you know the NES. Uh, technically, still had the bigger install base, so let's still put uh, it in there. Um, but for today, it's more of a curiosity than anything. Uh, play it maybe once so you can see for yourself how it is. After that, don't play it ever again. At least I don't think you should because th the Super Nintendo and Genesis versions are far better and far more worth your time. As for the collection itself, it's absolutely stellar. The ult uh, a perfect collection of the original era of TMNT video games. Um, all of, uh, Everything is here, even the shitty NES original. Which one day we'll redo with Deji because Deji missed that one, but one day I probably will record this game again just for the sake of bringing Deji in here. Um, we'll, <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see how things go. Um, or I'll do it for my channel. Sure, can I be in it? <laughs> yeah, of course. All right then. Um, the basic the basic point uh, is that the color collection is fantastic. The, like Jova said, the scanning of the promotional material and the box art and the manuals is stellar. It looks pristine, very easy on the eyes. Um, the there's a little clips in that went out of their way to include a Nintendo Power style hint uh, section that looks so accurate to what they're replicating. That we even have some nice turtle quips that are funny. Um, and the enhancements slash cheat codes are great, where we can now finally play with the boss characters in the Genesis versions of Tournament Fighters, so that's great. Um, so yeah, absolutely excellent. The only, the only minor concession that was made was that, once again, because the Collodion is terrible with this, they had to create a new version of the TMNT theme, 80s theme song, specifically for uh th this game and put it in the arcade version in, in the arcade games uh rom because they couldn't use the actual 80s theme because well let's just say nickelodeon is terrible with the rights for that shit. um yeah. so the little clips have to fortunately just like um just like uh tribute games with Terra's revenge they made a good version that's a that's as close as they possibly could um it's not like the, the the terrible version that's on YouTube by Nickelodeon themselves, but um, that's a whole topic for another day. The point is, uh, it's apparently clear that the digital the guys at Digital Clips poured their heart and soul into this, and they should be applauded for it. Uh, I would also like to say that Konami did a terrible job of marketing this collection, by the way, because I did not discover all the cool extra features of this collection via Konami's marketing. I did it through a developer interview. You'd think Konami would, would, in the trailers, would highlight how awesome the uh, the, mar the extras are, but I guess no. <laughs> like, fuck me. Fortunately, the color collection still sold tremendously, just purely on brand power, so no problem there. Um, yeah, so yeah, uh, that's it, everybody. One of these days, I, I'll probably get around to finally playing the 2003 games. We'll see how those are, or maybe I'll still get back to the NES. Well, that depends on how things go. So, so eventually we'll get back to TMNT, but for now we're taking a break from TMNT. So see you, what then? <laughs>